So, yes, as I said, I'm not trying to judge any country or any block of countries. I'm just trying to show you that this is really significant for you because the less uh, countries uh, want to buy U.S. treasuries or European government bonds, uh, the more pressure on interest rates and bond yields to rise that will have. And uh, the uh, era of easy money where people could borrow very cheaply and uh, buy things and do whatever they want is finished. Friday, May 10th, 2024, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. We're going to look at how the West is shooting itself in the foot, especially the United States and the EU. And uh, I'm not trying to defend BRICS or Russia or anything. I I'm trying to show you how it's going to affect you and is already affecting you through a higher cost of living, uh, through... Yeah, stagflation, if you want to call it. Uh, and the reason I'm doing it is because you won't hear that uh, in the mainstream press. You won't hear that from politicians. Uh, partly because they don't want you to know it and partly because uh, they're very arrogant and, and they think the West can do anything. So we're going to look at uh, how the EU decided a few days ago they're, they're going to confiscate or conduct legal plunder against Russia's assets. And we're going to look at how the U.S. is ready to do that. Uh, the U.S. action was earlier in April through the uh, foreign aid package that they passed, uh, the famous $95 billion, of which $61 billion went to Ukraine, and the rest went to Israel and uh, Taiwan. And uh, I will show you how this is having an impact uh, on the rest of the world, how a lot of countries are gravitating towards BRICS because they don't trust the West anymore. Uh, they don't trust to the West uh, in, in, uh, in that they don't trust doing business with the West. Before we quickly look at this today, uh, again, just wanted to thank all of you for your interest in the channel. Make sure you hit the uh, like button if you like my videos make sure you share the video make sure you hit the notification bell and uh, also more importantly make sure you subscribe to my channel if you uh, come here regularly and uh, I'd like to also let you know that Miles Franklin uh, my precious metal uh, affiliate in the US still has some interesting specials um, They've got a tenth of an ounce gold Canadian maple leaf uh, coins, only $29 over melt. It's a good way uh, of acquiring gold, a tenth of an ounce, especially seeing that the nominal price of gold is continuing to, to go up. Uh, and they also have a one ounce silver South African Kruger Rand, $3.10 over spot. And... Uh, Yes, we've had a slowdown in the growth of the price of gold and silver in the last few weeks, but it looks like it's picking up again. Uh, so we had weak uh, jobless claim uh, claims numbers yesterday. So the market uh, is discounting probably a little more of a chance of a rate cut sooner rather than later from the Fed. And I think that's one of the reasons why uh, this is happening. Uh, back to the West and why I think they're uh, shooting themselves in the foot. And I want to go back to 2003. And why is that? Well, because that was the uh, year that uh, the U.S. and the U.K. Uh, invaded Iraq under, you know, the uh, auspices or, you know, under a U.N., you know, go ahead, so to speak. Uh, I remember well uh, Colin Powell sitting at the UN showing this little thing and saying that uh, 
Iraq had weapons of mass destruction, <laughs> and uh, it, it didn't have weapons of mass destruction. It was all based on on a lie from intelligence. And some people even argue that uh, it was Benjamin Netanyahu who started all that uh, thing. Uh, I think in 2002, he he uh, testified to the U.S. Congress saying that Saddam Hussein definitely had weapons of mass destruction. So uh, France. Uh, voted against it, and, and they were called uh, cheese-eating surrender monkeys. But uh, I think history will find that the French uh, were right not to support that war. And it killed, uh, I think, half a million Iraqis. And Iraq today is much worse than it was under Saddam Hussein. It, it, it's a country that is uh, really in pretty much... Uh, and chaos. It's actually strengthened uh, Iran because Iran has a lot of influence in Iraq. Both of those countries used to be enemies. Uh, so it's been a mess. So the reason I brought that up, we didn't see any countries back then, uh, a, a year or two after when we found out that it that war was based on a lie. We didn't see countries trying to confiscate uh, American and, and British assets. You know, they we they could have used the same argument that the West is using right now. The West, you know, U.S., U.K., E.U., uh, they're not at war with Russia. It's the Ukraine that's at war with Russia. So, yes, and there's been debate in the U.S. and the E.U. whether they can legally do that. But it looks like uh, slowly but surely they are breaking the law. And that's why we're seeing so many countries and a lot of people, of course, disregard these countries because they're global south countries. They're not Europe or the U.S. Uh, it's a bit of the, you know, a hubris, a Western hubris that we're better than everyone else. But I, I, I see here that Xi Jinping and I'm not defending China. I'm just looking at things. He, he came to Europe. Of course, the FT is saying that uh, Xi Jinping's unproductive, uh, his tour of Europe was unproductive. Of course, they'd say that. But he, he met uh, President of Hungary, Orban. He, uh, what did he do recently as well? He met the president of Serbia. There's talk that Serbia wants to join, join BRICS, as you can see here. Of course, he met Macron. Uh, does France want to join BRICS? Well, last year there there was a story that uh, France asked to uh, attend the BRICS summit in South Africa, and they were denied. But uh, as you can see here, Macron uh, gave uh, Xi Jinping when he came to France recently a, a pretty uh, good welcome. He even took him to the Pyrenees Mountains, so he was kind of trying to schmooze uh, Xi Jinping. Uh, would it be possible that France is thinking about uh, joining BRICS? Why not? <laughs> the French uh, are quite uh, pragmatic. Uh, they, you know, they, they will uh, go where the opportunity lies, I think. So even France, you could argue, and I'm not saying they're going to join BRICS. I'm just speculating here. Uh, and you look at uh, stories like this, Iran's nuclear chi chief says it's ready to help Saudi Arabia develop nuclear program. <laughs> uh, I, I thought that was the job of the United States under the petrodollar agreement. Now, Iran is doing that. Uh, another one, Vietnam to apply to join BRICS in 2024. It's a picture of, uh, I guess, the Vietnamese president and Xi Jinping. So the world is waking up. And uh, and I think a lot of people realize that our financial situation in the West is precarious. And I'm not saying the financial situation in the BRICS is that much better, but they want to have an alternative to a dying, uh, dying dollar, uh, a dying euro, a dying pound, a dying Swiss franc, <laughs> a dying yen, especially. But one of the biggest reasons I think are these actions by the EU and the US to basically steal uh, money from Russia. So as I said, 
uh, on May 8th, the FT reported EU, EU agrees uh, to arm Ukraine using profits from Russian uh, state assets. Belgium Central uh, Securities Depository, Euroclear, expected to start transferring money uh, to the bloc in July. And, and they're going to take about 3 billion euros a year, probably uh, interest uh, that uh, these securities earn. Um, the interest, uh, like they're probably mostly bonds, government bonds. Uh, so that's the EU. And then the US, of course, uh, back in uh, April when you had this uh, foreign aid package, uh, they put it in there that the US could also uh, take uh, more than six billion of the 300 billion of Russian frozen assets that are in U.S. banks. So I think the whole world sees this. And uh, that's another reason why I think they're going to be buying gold. Uh, some some people are arguing, oh, uh, just because you buy gold doesn't mean you're going to have a gold standard. Uh, that that could be, be so. But it, 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 it shows that countries don't have... Uh, you know, they're concerned about holding dollars because, you know, when you hold dollars, it has to be with an American bank in the U.S. And it's very easy to freeze your account. Uh, the Americans even froze uh, Switzerland's uh, dollar reserves back during World War II. So they could do it. It's just like uh, with an individual. Uh, they froze, you know, they've been freezing bank accounts for people closing accounts. So gold, uh, you know, people don't forget gold is money and it's got no counterparty risk. So you can hold that gold in your country and you don't have to worry uh, about the U.S. confiscating. Well, of course, they could invade your country like they usually do. But uh, I, I think that uh, kind of uh, strategy is becoming less and less uh, prevalent. Uh, they prefer now creating these uh, color revolutions, uh, I would say. Uh, the other thing these countries are doing, apart from buying gold to protect their assets, is basically dealing uh, with each other uh, with their own currency instead of using a th third party currency like the dollar. And uh, having gold, of course, gives their currencies a, a little bit more credibility. And that's why I, I think they're going to continue to accumulate uh, gold. And you don't even have to have a, a gold standard uh, if two countries uh, run uh, trade during the year and one country is a small surplus. They can just send a bit of gold to that uh, or receive a bit of gold from uh, the uh, deficit country, and that's how it works. They settle uh, their uh, accounts like that because unlike the dollar, which is a, a credit instrument, uh, with gold you can uh, settle debts. Uh, how can you settle a debt by issuing more debt? Because that's what the current system is, and, and that's why uh, I, I think it's going to unravel, not just because of what the West is doing, vis-a-vis uh, -vis its uh, policies towards the global south and the BRICS, but uh, more to the uh, point that uh, this debt mountain is becoming unsustainable and uh, our fiat currencies are becoming worth less and less. And that's what a rising gold and silver price point to. So... Yes, as I said, I'm not trying to judge any country or any block of countries. I'm just trying to show you that this is really significant for you because the less uh, countries uh, want to buy U.S. treasuries or European government bonds, uh, the more pressure on interest rates and bond yields to rise that will have. And... Uh, the uh, era of easy money where people could borrow very cheaply and uh, buy things and do whatever they want is finished. And that's, and that's what we're going to get from, from these actions uh, in the West. And we're already feeling it uh, to some extent, I would say. And it's probably going to get worse over the next few years. So 
Uh, let's look at the markets then this morning. It's just gone past 8 a.m. London time. So we'll start with gold. Well, we've got spot gold up at another $23. So pretty strong action here. We're at 23.69. The high has been 70. The low has been 23.45. So we're up just about 1%. Uh, silver, that's up 30 cents, just over uh, 1%. At 28.63, uh, high's been 67, low 21. So, yeah, I, I think it's looking very good. And uh, on a secular basis, I in the long term, I, I think it's still early days for the bear market in fear currencies or the bull market in precious metals. That's how I see it. I'm not telling you what to do. Uh, yeah, we had a good day in the stock market, mainly because we had weak jobless claims numbers. Uh, of course, they were higher than expected, which uh, they're weak because it means more people are claiming for unemployment. And the market likes that. It's like it doesn't, it, it's uh, kind of uh, contradictory, but having worked in the markets, yes, that, that's how things work. Uh, markets look at, at data. And especially if the economic data are worse than expected, you'd think stock market would drop. No, uh, the, these markets are so dependent on liquidity that the way they see it is that the central bank, seeing that the economy is weaker, is not going to tighten as much, which means more liquidity. And that's why we went up a lot. This morning, the Dow is up 83 points. The NASDAQ 100 futures up 58 S&P is continuing to rise. It's up 12. So it feels like uh, we've got a melt up going and it kind of makes sense. But as I said, the common denominator of all values is the currency. And if the currency is going down quicker versus gold and silver, it means that a, a lot of these asset price rises, like in stocks, are not really that strong in real terms. Uh, what about the currencies? Well, they're pretty steady. Um, dollar yen, where is the dollar yen? 155.70. So I won't go over the currencies. They're pretty steady. WTI crude is still uh, below 80. It's at 79.60. Yes, it's up overnight, three quarters of a percent. Uh, Brent is at 84.25. High grade copper is up 2% this morning at 468 and copper is usually seen as a good indicator of economic activity uh, does it mean organic economic activity no I, I think it means uh, inflationary credit driven economic activity and that's what uh, high grade copper is pointing to I think is pointing to this melt up and also a, a relative outperformance by hard assets uh, relative to paper assets. I'm just going to check the the bond market. We're going to look at the 10-year uh, yield. Yeah, that, that, that's kind of uh, sta stable right now. It's unchanged overnight at 445. So uh, with that, I'm going to wish you all a very good day and also a, a very good upcoming uh, weekend. Take care. Bye.